Okay, so we are in our Clavio account. And first things first is we want to make sure we actually have abandoned cart data coming in. Unfortunately, you can't really build this out until you have actual test data or actual data coming in from your website. So usually if you're using something like Shopify, BigCommerce, um, there will be instant integrations that you can do within Clavio. So it makes it super simple. Usually it's a one click, you sign in, it's integrated, it's ready to go. There's a few extra snippets of code you could add, but for the most part, abandoned cart should be captured automatically when you integrate. If you don't have a native integration with Clavio, you will have to explore doing an API, but that's a whole other thing. So we're going to assume we have an actual integration. You can still follow along if you have an API, as long as your data is coming in, you can still follow along. Okay, so I have a uh, nice little fake store here, and we're going to basically assume, you know, I don't have any customers yet. So how do I get that data in there? Well, we're going to pretend we're a customer and pretend to check out. So we are going to basically add both of these to our cart so that we have a little bit of variety to see when we're doing our test. And we're basically just gonna go to our cart. Let's check out. And um, this is important with uh, Clavio. We basically want to capture our email, get to the shipping stage, and then Clavio will automatically capture that as a, uh, I think it's called started checkout or checkout started. <laughs> it, it kind of flips it on between different integrations. All right, we have our information, our email, have an address in there, some test data, just so we can have that going over into Clavio. We're going to continue to shipping. And once we're here, we are going to leave. So we're gonna abandon our cart. So we are going to go back over into our Clavio. So let's give that a little refresh. It should be pretty instant um, when it comes, uh, for the data to come over. And it looks like it has. So let's just double check, take a look. It should be, uh, you know, you won't see a whole lot of information, but you should see the cart come in and you see specifically a started checkout metric was fired, which is exactly what we need. Okay, so going into our flows. So to have cart data coming into a Clavio email, you cannot just send a one-off campaign email. You have to do a abandoned cart flow. And that is because Clavio works off of triggered metrics. So the only way you can put specific data into an email is if the metric that fired off initially um, correlates to that event. So this will make sense in a second. So we're gonna come in here. You can always come in, grab a abandoned cart reminder as an easy go-to, but let's pretend we're starting from scratch. And we're just gonna call this one abandoned cart test again and create our flow. When you get to this screen, you will have a few options here, but we're gonna go with a metric. Uh, again, that's gonna have all of the data that we need. And we're gonna come down to check out started and done. And tip here, once you press done, uh, you cannot change this. So for any reason you get pretty far, you can always duplicate it and then change the trigger. So just keep that in mind. Once you've set that, you can undo it. So we're going to drop in an email and, you know, if you have something already pre-designed, ready to go, totally fine. But we are basically going to just select a wonderful snack template from Clavio themselves. So let's just go for this basic one here. We're really just using it so that we can get the data going. And you can always uh, come back and save this and plug it into um, future emails. So say if you have a designer that's coming in and specifically is going to spruce everything up, you can always save this special awesome dynamic table we're about to build. So we have our data, we have our email. Next thing next is we just wanna make sure our information came in. So clicking preview over here is going to preview as if you had someone fire off that initial trigger metric, which is start a checkout. And as you can see, I see me, I see my items. I see all my wonderful data coming in, fantastic. So we're gonna come over into table and drop that in just to clean things up a bit so that we're just looking at what we wanna look at. I'm just gonna delete all this stuff. 
So this is personal preference, but I like to just keep it two columns. We're going to remove these titles. We're gonna come over to block style. Oop, let me save. Uh, we're going to change the vertical line to middle. Um, you'll see why later. Basically, it's gonna keep this uh, text column kind of floating in the middle instead of kind of all the way at the top. Just a pet peeve of mine, but. And then we're going to remove that top little line that was there and hit save. So clicking back into our uh, table. This table is basically going to be the vehicle for all of the information we want to reproduce um, from their cart. So say we want you know, an image here, the product title, maybe a description, a price, all of that will live inside this single table. So what we're gonna do here is come over into rows and currently it's just a normal static table. We're gonna turn it into dynamic and we need to do something called setting a data source. And what this is basically saying is, ideally this would automatically connect, but you have to set this piece. It's not, you know, this piece here is not really gonna work. You have to update it to fit the data that just came in. Luckily, you set it the first time, you don't have to set it again. It is pretty much gonna be universal for how your data is coming in. So to set this piece, um, you're gonna come over into preview and let's just pick, um, you know, a random title here. So this has all the information that was collected and I just clicked the title and it gave me this variable. So what the variable is, is for instance, if I had this for another person, a different cart, a different item, different title, this would be the universal variable for the product title, product number zero, and it would you know produce that information. So this is gonna be basically you know, applied to capture this specific uh, product title. So you're gonna copy that. So we're gonna come over here and paste this piece in. And what we're gonna do is delete this later half and delete this front half. And what we're basically telling Clavio to do is that our data is coming in with this piece attached at the very front. Um, so it's basically a common denominator across all of the products coming in. But also we have this piece here that is basically gonna say uh, for each item that we have, I want this to repeat. And this is gonna be the other common denominator to loop the piece together. Um, I don't know how else to make that sound less technical, <laughs> but for the most part, if you come in, you do this piece here, you are basically telling this table to repeat itself for every item in the cart. And these are the special little pieces to make sure it does it correctly. That's the best way I can describe it. All right, so we hit save. Now we actually wanna come in and start putting in the information that we wanna show people. So let's say we have column one, we want it to be an image. So the best way to do this is coming back to your sample data. That's why this sample data is so important. You literally could not do this without this piece. Um, you could always assume and you know, like, oh, you know, I'll look up, you know, maybe I'll find the, no, 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 no. You gotta have your test data, makes it so much easier. So we see a lot of information in here, but basically what we wanna do is scroll down, ooh, until we see a wonderful piece that details the images. So we're gonna grab this first one Difference between these two is this is gonna be a thumbnail size, so just grab the full source there. Um, and we have this lovely long string, this variable. Copy that. And we're gonna to go to browse, placeholder. This is where we have those dynamic placeholders. And we're gonna paste that in. The issue with just pasting this in as it currently is, is that this is very specific to the product in the cart right now. We want this to be able to be used across all items in the cart. So what we're going to do is basically come over here. We don't need this row collection anymore. We've already set this. So we're gonna delete it. And we're gonna turn this into item because we set our row alias as item. We're also going to delete this piece here. Why did we delete that? Because that was specific to the product in the cart, product number zero. And we want this to be for product zero, one, two, three, four, five, and onward. So we delete that piece. 
but we're keeping this zero. This zero is specific to the image. So Clavio starts at zero. So say you have three product images, you could change this to say, I want you to show the second product. That's or the second product image. So this is really just dictating which image, if you have multiple, do you want to show? And we want to show the very first one. So what we're going to do is save. All right, you can always go in and adjust the alt text, the link, uh, the width. Let's go ahead and just set this to 250 for now. Maybe make it centered. Make sure to click save, okay? So we have our save. Now let's go into column two. So now we're going into what we want the actual information to say. And let's say we go back to the title. Let's copy this one in. Let's just paste it in. Just, let's just paste everything that we want in for now, and then we'll adjust it. Um, let's see, let's do a, the description. And let's do the price. So I'm gonna put a little price dollar sign and let's find where the price is located. Do, 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 do. Variant price. All right, we need to adjust these, right? So let's go ahead and do what we did last time. We're going to remove the row collection, adjust this for the alias, if you want to get untechnical with it, remove the first bit and trim that initial word down to match what we set. Okay, we also want to remove the uh, zeros in that one because we do not need it telling us what product number. Doot. Okay, let's go ahead and hit save. Let's give it a preview. Beautiful. So. Um, I know it's confusing because they both have the same exact uh, description. That's my fault. <laughs> I copy and pasted that in. Also the price. But as you can see, it did change for the title. It did change for the image. So it is changing for each item in the cart. Okay, now let's say we want to link. Well, I want to link the product title. I want to link the product image. Okay, best way to do that. And it depends on how your data comes in. Okay, so when you look at your data, you may have an actual link to your product. In my case, I do not, but I have a field called product handle. There it is. And the product handle is like, you know, shop name slash beef infused dog treats. You know, that is basically uh, in a URL. That's the, the ending piece of that URL. So the issue is, is that we, you know, this link, we got to adjust it first, right? So we're going to remove that piece, item turns to items, and remove the cart number identifier. Okay, so we're going to come in here, and basically, I'm just going to paste in my actual product link that happens before the product handle. So in this example, um, beef infused dog treats, it is, um, first, it leads with this piece here. And that is the same for all of my products. So we pasted that piece in there. Make sure you have your HTTPS. There can be some issues if you just put like a www dot. And we're going to copy this. Come over to column two. Link this one as well and hit save. So let's go in preview. Make sure it linked. It did link. Look, it is changing between the two. If you see in the bottom left, let's go ahead and open one up. It opens the product page, beautiful, the pumpkin ones, beautiful. So as you can see, we have the data coming in, it's dynamic, it's repeating for each product in the cart, which is awesome. Um, other trick, just when you're doing your abandoned cart is maybe you want to link this out to their cart. So you should have so you'll have a checkout URL here, if you just copy that in. This one, this is tricky, this one does not have to be dynamic because it is a single URL that does not change from product to product, okay? And we're going to preview it. Big thing here, this already comes in with HTTPS slash slash, all that good stuff that we need. If your URLs are coming in without that, please make sure 
that you actually uh, add that piece in if you have to. But um, to just make sure all your links work. And then if I want to return to my cart, test that. Let's see. All right, it takes them right back to their cart to finish checking out. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? It's really just finding those variables, plugging them in, adjusting them to fit that dynamic keywords that you'll find in your data, and you're set to go. Customize it uh, any way that you like, add some more designs to it, but if you have that solid block there, you can keep using it for your abandoned cart emails. If you have any questions, though, feel free to let me know. I have uh, a few links down in the bottom. If you don't have a Klaviyo uh, account yet and you just want to go in and play around, see if it's a good fit, you can always create a free account um, and test that integration to see if it'll, if it'll work for your website. There's also a link to my Upwork profile if you need an email marketing freelancer been doing email marketing for over seven years now, uh, been working on Klaviyo projects for a couple of years as well. So if you need someone to help with your email marketing, it's too much, you know, this video was too much for you. Don't worry, I'm available. You can check out my Upwork profile, send me a message. I'd be happy to help. See you next time.